What lies below the Earth's surface? The crust, the mantle filled with hot lava, the deep and bubbling hot core. Yes, all of that is true, but there is also something else there. Scientists have found an ocean under the Earth's surface, a massive one at that. Sounds staggering, right? Let me tell you all about it. The discovery has been made some 700 kilometers deep into the Earth. The ocean lies just above the lower mantle in something called the mantle transition zone. The water is present in a rock known as Ringbudite. And do you know how big this ocean is? About three times the volume of all the planet's oceans combined. So if you take all of the Earth's oceans and triple them, that is the amount of water discovered inside the Earth. Now the question is, how does this water get there? Was it present when our planet was formed or did it appear due to some process that happened later? Now according to the findings presented in a 2014 scientific paper, the water cycle extends deep into the Earth's interior. Scientists believe the oceanic crust slides under adjoining plates of crust and sinks into the mantle, carrying water with it. They have now concluded that there is a mantle transition zone that acts as a large reservoir of water. That is because the minerals in this zone have a high water storage capacity. Consider Ringwoodite. The rock in which the ocean has been found, it has a crystal structure that attracts hydrogen. It is basically like a sponge which soaks up water. Researchers also studied earthquakes to make this discovery. They deployed an extensive network of 2,000 2, seismographs across the U.S. and scrutinized seismic waves emitted by over 500 earthquakes. You see these waves traveling through Earth's inner layers experience deceleration when passing through damp rock. And this indicated that there is indeed an extensive water reservoir inside planet Earth. Now that the ocean has been unearthed, it challenges our understanding of the source of Earth's water. All this while we thought water circulated between the atmosphere, surface water bodies and the underground water table. But we never knew that it was present deep inside the Earth as well. How does it affect the cycling of water? Do we need to redraw the water cycles in our textbooks? The scientific endeavor behind this revelation was led by Stephen Jacobson, a researcher at Northwestern University. He now asserts that there is significant evidence supporting that Earth's water originated internally. Could that really be the case? And our next story is about Pakistan. That it has been witnessing chaos is nothing new, but it is the extent to which this chaos runs and how things are spiraling out of control that is shocking. The question is, where do things even go from here? Is there an end to this chaos? And can it be reined in? And there are multiple reasons why I'm asking these questions tonight. Let me break down the biggest one for you. Pakistan, as I speak, is panic-stricken. And this has nothing to do uh, with the economic crisis in the country. This is about white powder letters. What kind of white powder? Before I get to that, you know who received these letters? High Court judges. You heard that right. On the 2nd of April, all eight judges of the Islamabad High Court, including the Chief Justice Ahmed Farooq, received suspected anthrax laced letters. And that's not all. A day later, that is today, the 3rd of April, the horror repeated. Some judges of Pakistan's Lahore High Court got threatening white powder, white powder letters. What's even going on? Who was responsible? Even 24 hours later, there is no clarity. How and why? Is there no clarity on who is behind these letters? 
Also, the timing of these letters being received is extremely crucial. Let me just tell you what happened before these judges received the letters. You see, the letters were received following a very interesting development. The Supreme Court took so more to notice and formed a seven-member bench chaired by the Chief Justice of Pakistan to hear the case of six Islamabad High Court justices who accused spy agencies, including Pakistan's powerful in intelligence agency, the ISI, of meddling in judicial matters. In fact, there were allegations by the Islamabad High Court judges that their bedrooms were bugged, also that their relatives were abducted and tortured by the intelligence agency's personnel to get desired verdicts. Now, were these letters meant to intimidate the judges? What's the guarantee that this will not happen again? And what is being done to protect judges from threats? What about safeguarding the judiciary's independence? Also, if this can happen to judges in Pakistan, what does this tell you about the situation on the ground? And by the way, this is not the only horror that Pakistan is dealing with. There's also the terror. And we have been telling you at great length about how Pakistan has been under attack by the TTP. Look at what the situation on the ground is looking like. It's grim and scary to say the least. Now we are just into the fourth month of this year and Pakistan has already seen 245 terror attacks and counter-terror operations. Pakistan's support to terrorism has left it to pay the price for its actions, it seems. And caught in the midst of these crises are the people of Pakistan who are grappling with growing uncertainty and economic chaos, soaring inflation, persisting cost of living crisis. Let me just give you a sample of what they have been going through. Just how bad things have gotten in the cash-strapped country. The latest report by the World Bank is a sad reminder of the state of affairs in Pakistan. The biannual report warns that over 10 million more people are at risk of descending into poverty in Pakistan. Over 10 million more people. Roughly 98 million Pakistanis, by the way, are already grappling with poverty. And the report indicated that Pakistan is set to miss almost all major macroeconomic targets. Pakistan's worsening chaos has left its civilians in the lurch with no way out. No wonder there have been reports of Pakistan flight attendants going missing after landing in Canada. Or the story of a Pakistani boxer nowhere to be found and going missing in Italy. Are these signs of growing desperation among the people of Pakistan who want to run away from the land of mounting misery? You have heard of America's Watergate scandal. You may have also heard of India's Colgate. Tonight, we have the story of Rolex Gate, a scandal involving luxury Rolex watches. Meet Dina Buluarte. Some of you may be able to recognize her. Buluarte is the president of Peru. She also happens to be the country's first female president. Buluarte is currently being probed for corruption. The question being asked is, how did she get the money for all her watches and jewellery? Buluarte has been photographed wearing jewellery worth over $500,000. Her monthly salary as president, by the way, is around $3,300. How did she afford the watches and the jewellery? Was she born with a silver spoon? Buluarte was born in a modest family in rural Peru. She was the youngest of 14 children. Buluarte graduated as a lawyer. In 2004, she co-authored a book. 55% of this book's text was found to be plagiarized. Buluarte was investigated. In 2018, she ran for mayor of Lima district. The campaign was unsuccessful. In 2021, Buluwati was part of the presidential ticket of Pedro Castillo. The duo won. Buluwati became the vice president. She was also appointed the Minister of Development and Social Inclusion. She resigned from that position in 2022 but remained vice president. In 2022, Castillo was impeached, remember, for trying to dissolve the Congress during an impeachment proceeding against him. Buluarte succeeded him. She took office as Peru's president in December 2022. And ever since, she has been spotted wearing head-turning pieces of jewellery and watches. In mid-March, in fact, a Peruvian news outlet 
named La and Serona began reviewing thousands of photographs of the president. This outlet concluded that Buluarte owned at least 14 luxury watches, including one that is priced at over $14,000. The outlet also pointed at a Cartier bracelet that's priced at over $54,000. We are talking about 45 plus lakh rupees. Neither of these pieces were listed in Buluarte's asset declaration, by the way. So when Buluarte started flashing Rolex watches, people could not help but raise eyebrows and ask questions. Where did she get this kind of money from? The president claims all that she owns is the result of her hard work. I'm quoting, I came to the presidential palace with my hands clean. That is what she claims. Adding, I'm quoting further, I will leave with my hands clean, as I have promised the Peruvian people, quote unquote. The people, you see, are not convinced. The government controller has announced that it will be reviewing Boluarte's asset declarations. An inquiry has started. And as part of the preliminary probe, Peru's police went to Boluarte's home in search for watches last week. Armed police also raided the government palace. The door of the president's house was broken down. This after calls made by the officials to open up the door reportedly went unanswered. Never in Peru's history has something like this happened before. You know, the police forcibly entering or raiding the home of a serving president. Buluwate's party and her political allies have called the raid excessive. The government described the raid as, quote-unquote, disproportionate and unconstitutional. Buluwate herself gave a televised address following the raid, calling it arbitrary, disproportionate and abusive. But to the common people of Beiru, corruption cases like these are now a new normal. The country has seen leader after leader being removed from office over corruption scandals. Just last month, Peru's Prime Minister, Alberto Otarola, stepped down in the face of corruption accusations. An audio clip allegedly featuring uh, the leader showed how he was using his position to help his love interests get government contracts. He said he is resigning to quote-unquote, give peace of mind to the president and recompose the cabinet. It is anything but peace that President Boluarte is staring at now. To start with, with Otarola gone, the president has one less ally. Two, there is an inquiry on her. Three, Otarola's replacement, Gustavo Adrian Zen, needs to win an investiture vote in the parliament this week. Will Buluate's party be able to beat the clock? Or should I say watch? If he fails to win the vote, the entire cabinet will be forced to resign. The vote will be taking place amidst the Rolex gate. It's not the best of time for Boluarte. Her allies have ruled out questions of the president's resignation. But on Monday, six out of 19 ministers were replaced. Add to this the fact that the president is not at all popular. Even before the Rolex, Rolex gate, in fact, her popularity ratings were around 9%. Looks like with the Rolex gate, Boluarte's government could be on borrowed time.